Welcome to Bits of History. My name is Lee Pulaski, President of the Resurrection Bay Historical Society. This bit of history is about the Lowell Creek Diversion Dam and Tunnel. We'll start our story here at the Diversion Dam in Lowell Canyon, where the waters of Lowell Creek enter the tunnel. When Seward was founded in 1903, Lowell Creek ran through the town, approximately down what is now Jefferson Street. Flooding was a perennial problem. In 1928, at the cost of $125,000, a wooden flume was constructed to confine the waters of Lowell Creek during heavy rains. A dam across Lowell Canyon channeled the stream into the flume. The flume measured 12 feet wide and 8 feet deep. The flume did not solve the flooding problem. During very heavy rains, the gravel, rocks, and debris carried by the stream filled the flume and the water overflowed. Even if there was no flooding, the rocks and debris caused great damage to the flume. For example, the Seward Gateway of September 10, 1930 reported that heavy rains had torn approximately 84,000 feet of timber out of the flume and scattered it along the beach from Seward to Lowell Point. But the paper also mentioned that most of the wood on the beach had been gathered by residents for firewood. A solution to the flooding problem was proposed by the U.S. Corps of Engineers in 1937. The plan was to construct a tunnel through Bear Mountain to divert the waters of Lowell Creek from its path through the town. Congress appropriated the money for the project in 1938. The Butler Construction Company of Seattle won the contract for the project with a bid of $214,000. Work began on August 2, 1939. M.P. Butler was in charge of the project and Dick Taylor was tunnel superintendent. Tunneling started on the south side of Bear Mountain. The Seward Gateway of September 19, 1939 reported, the question is often asked if a crew will start on the glacier stream end. Contractor Butler says no, that the entire distance will be bored from south to north, as all the rock and dirt must be taken out that way. By early October, tunneling was proceeding at 13 feet a day, with 20 men on the job working in two shifts. Later, three shifts were employed. On Wednesday, the 20th of March, 1940, the tunnel was completed. According to the short gateway of March 21st, the official time of completion was 11.13 a.m. On September 7th, as work was progressing on putting a concrete floor in the tunnel and constructing the diversion dam to channel the creek waters into the tunnel, it started to rain. The short gateway reported the downpour reached torrential proportions that evening, worse than anything of the sort for years past. As usual, the flume was soon clogged with rocks and other debris and floodwaters streamed out on either side. A temporary dam at the tunnel entrance, preventing the stream from entering the tunnel, went out at 10 o'clock that evening, and water began running through the tunnel. The night crew secured the heavy equipment in the tunnel and ran out the south exit. As the volume of water increased, some equipment and tools were washed out of the tunnel. On the plus side, as the title of an editorial in the se September 10th Seward Gateway said, the tunnel works. The diversion of the water through the tunnel stopped the flooding in town and proved the worth of the project. When the water level went down and the flume was cleared, the water was again diverted down the flume so work could be completed on the tunnel and the diversion dam. The project was completed on October 31, 1940. The dam was 4,400 feet long, the tunnel 10 feet in diameter, 2,068 foot long in length. One worker was killed during the construction of the tunnel, Freddie Parkhurst, 32. On June 8, 1940, he and three other men were working at the tunnel intake when a rock about 90 feet above them came loose. The men ran for cover, but the falling rock hit a cliff and sheared off a piece of rock which struck Parkhurst. Fellow workers rushed him to the hospital, arriving there in about five minutes but he was dead on arrival. Freddie was a newcomer to Seward and had only been working on a tunnel for three weeks. 
He had told friends that he'd run away from home when he was seven and been on his own ever since. He's buried in an unmarked grave in the Seward City Cemetery. We will end our story of the Lowell Creek Diversion Project here at the waterfall, where the waters of Lowell Creek leave the tunnel and enter Resurrection Bay. The Lowell Creek Diversion Project was the first flood control project completed by the Army Corps of Engineers in Alaska. And on November 27, 1977, the project was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. Thank you for listening to this bit of history. To learn more about Seward's history, visit the Seward Museum at the corner of Third and Jefferson.